All right, we're gonna we're gonna do this again, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are again, and uh, <laughs> well, if you don't try the first time, you dust yourself off and you try again, and here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's talk about cloning. Obviously, wasn't supposed to use the video there, uh, so my apologies to anybody that I may I tripped over. Wasn't supposed to, but. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't anything, you know, I wasn't trying to get any royalties off that or anything like that, but definitely that video, um, by the great band Iron Maiden kind of says it all, uh, for perhaps how this thing's going to all take place. Um, and again, you know, this band, uh, from, I mean, I've been listening to them for since the eighties, man, and albums like, you know, um, the number of the beast and just they go from that and then to the end and now you're showing videos on perhaps taking down these centers and people etc cetera, etc cetera. and you know i mean that's just the way this game works it goes from the golden age to the dark age and it repeats it's cyclical anyway ladies and gentlemen i had no plans on coming out with this but as very special presentation thanks for joining me on this sunday um uh for decoder reality and all you great decoders out there um wherever you may be well thanks for joining in t tonight today wherever you're at um folks i started to decode <laughs> um i started to break down uh area 51 which is you know one of the most secret places in the United States, if not the most secretive place in the United States, if not in the world. And that's tied to, you know, obviously UFOs and they were going to go crash it in 2019. They were going to try to go. They had a group of people go out. I don't know if any of you remember, um, but I started to research this because it dropped into my mind. And, uh, and then it led into the latitude longitude of the location it's located near groom lake like we're being groomed and then things started to come at me really heavy i've never really kind of been into the ufo stuff just nah it's fun i like and i love science fiction movies and all that. it's fun but then i got into this organization i was just going through videos of area 51 and I was watching some Bob Lazier, Lazar stuff. And I mean, that guy has shown. Now, if, I'm just going to drop a bomb right now. You guys can do your research. I have a decode coming out on Area 51. But the latitude, longitude, as I have been saying so many times over the course of these years of doing this, and I would encourage all of you to locate your latitude, longitude of your birth city, the hospital you were born in, where you're at right now. It's the energy coming down latitudinally and then longitudinally the energy running across and they meet at a specific point and bam, that spot is where that energy is going to drop. And that is the X marks the spot and the location of area 51. This is so crazy because ladies and gentlemen, I lived in Las Vegas for a few years of my life it's called the silver state i didn't even i didn't even like that's what i'm saying life gets in the way and even when you're decoding you know it's it it's called the silver state silver is tied to the number 20 in numerology which is tied to duality silver is the most electrical element on the periodic tables nevada the nevada tests sites for the for the bombs they drop i mean and then you have area 51 there and it's called the it, what's what's just crazy is you have Groom Lake, and then you have, it's called Paradise. There's a city in Las Vegas called Paradise, Nevada, where the Route 91 festival happened. The actual location of that was in Paradise, not Las Vegas. But this area out there, and it just goes on and on. The city that's ne the nearest city to Area 51 is called Rachel Rachel Ra. And so I started to get into this stuff, man. I started, and I was just so, I couldn't, I can't believe what I found. So anyway, the latitude, longitude of Area 51, 37 degrees north, 100. Let me just show all of you. So, so I, can, I can give you a bird's eye view of how I do it, okay? So when you go to the periodic table 
And then let me just show all of you. Here it is. Area 51. And you'll notice right here is the latitude longitude, 37 degrees north, 115 degrees west. So when you take that number, those numbers, you go to the periodic table, you're going to get rubidium, which is, what do you think that is right there? Well, it's part of the all-seeing eye. And then what about the 115? Well, it's this element right here that Bob Lazar talks about countlessly. He's been on the Joe Rogan show. This is what makes UFO travel happen. This is all about UFO, Moscovium. And the longitude of Area 51 is 115 degrees. Come on. It's a no-brainer. That's how important these elements are when it comes to decoding our reality. And it's just insane, folks. Like, the, what I've found has just been, it's really rocked my world. It's really, really walked my world. And, and it, 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 of course, being a fan of the show Westworld, decoding that show. It's like all these little breadcrumbs are leading up to where I'm at right now. So I, and, and it, this, this information was so heavy. So I started to, you know, start to bring this out. And, you know, a lot of you come out with some comments on the social media. And, you know, you were, some of you, you got to check out Donald Marshall. I have checked out Donald Marshall. And if you know who Donald Marshall is, he's supposedly somebody who's was raised at a cloning center in Canada. And, you know, the, the issue I have with that guy is if, if, if he's bringing out probably some of the most important information ever on the world stage and he's still alive, something doesn't fit because there are many people that end up coming out with information and they get taken out. So there's something that just is kind of something doesn't fit with that. So, you know, yeah, I've watched his whole interview, many of them. He's got to really, I'm going to actually grab the one that I watched. I'm going to put it in the description um, of this video when I finish. And I would highly suggest all of you watch it, but you got to take it with a grain of salt. But of course, what he says is related to sleeping. Now, the way it works with cloning and the cloning centers and again, this is just hypothetical. I can't say this is true. We're just talking. Let's talk about cloning. Obviously, Dolly the sheep comes out. That happens. That was the, the, the start of it all. And it Dolly, and if you do the numerology on that, it was a sheep. It's the shepherd and the sheep. I've decoded. You got to start taking all this stuff into consideration. Sheep equals 26, just like Adam and Eve, just like iron, which is in our blood. Why did they clone a sheep first out of any of the animals? Think about this stuff. And then the shepherd is 37 in numerology. And the latitude of area 51 is 37 degrees north. I mean, that's not an accident, folks. Okay? It's not an accident. And so when you get into Donald and his whole story, it connects to, he says, when you go to sleep and you get into REM sleep, rapid eye movement, and, you, and you've been cloned, they can take your consciousness, transfer it onto a clone <coughs> in the center, and they can start to do whatever they want. And then you get into torture and all these crazy science fiction, you know, ideas that, that maybe they're true. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we have to say we don't know. Anybody that says, oh, I know it for sure, you haven't been there. You don't know any. We don't know anything. These are all just ideas. Okay? We just got to keep neutral to this. I'm not saying that it does or it doesn't happen, but again, we need absolutes. We don't have those. We have ideas. But nonetheless, think about how many, and, and they, all they, he says all they need is your DNA. Well, how many of you have done the 23andMe test? I did it way back when. How many of you got swabbed? How many of you been to the hospital and got... You don't... We don't... Just don't know. But once they have that, is it possible that that can be... That something can be done with that? And again, these are just ideas I'm throwing out to you. But what I, what I, what I wanted to come on here and show all of you because these stories are great to talk about. They're fun. I know it's, just, I know it's absolutely disturbing and, and, you know, grotesque at what Donald 
uh, talks about. I mean, the guy was, what's crazy is that he was, he was on, it looks like, he was on the cover of an album by a band named Megadeth. Now, Megadeth was one of my favorite bands growing up. Matter of fact, some of the passwords I use to get in, to log into whatever, I used to use it. It would be that, and there would be a whole bunch of other stuff, but it would be Megadeth. Why? And then Dave Mustaine was a Jehovah's Witness, so was I. And so anyway, they have an album called The World Needs a Hero. And this, this album has what, it, I mean, they even, they even showed it on this video interview with Donald. He says, yeah, it certainly looks like me. And so they, they have this album cover and it's with him laying down and there's a skeleton coming out of the chest. But the song, it's song number two, the, the total minutes, if you break it down, it's like it's three minutes and 52 seconds long. When you break all that stuff down, you do all the conversions that I do with the methodology I have with pi and phi and prime numbers and sine and cosine waves. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I just don't know how man could ever code something like this. Just from the small little bits of information I got from an album cover that's linked to Donald and he supposedly is from a cloning center and still alive to talk about it. I mean, just stuff that's just really whacked. The world needs a hero. Equals the number 78. 78 in the string of pi is located at digit number 66. And Dave Mustaine, his full birth name is 66. And there's 66 books in the Bible. And folks, just it just goes gangbuster crazy when you start to link all this stuff. <laughs> Anyways, um, if you take the word clone... Let me see if I can find this. I, I want to show all of you this slide that I found, that I made. Uh, where is it? Hang on, let me find it. Is this it? Give me one sec, folks. Yeah, here it is. So I want you to take into consideration something that I have. And here it is. So, I was, you know, I, I, I love decoding the Bible. I love decoding the Upanishads. But this book, of course, is the most popular spell book on the world stage. So, obviously, there's... And who wrote it? And what does it really mean? Because I know there wasn't a dude named Jonah who got swallowed by a big fish. I know that wasn't real. It's an allegorical story. This story of the Christ being put into a, a, a tomb... And then rising after three days, of course, you can tie that to the sun and the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn and the Son of God and, you know, the celestial bodies. But this story allegorically down here on planet Earth in the physicality of the 3D reality that we live out, is it possible that the whole story of Jesus was just nothing other than cloning him? And that's how he was able to appear again. I mean, notice the numbers that are linked or the words that are linked to the word clone. Clone 23, history, crown, blood. I mean, you're supposed to drink the blood, eat the body. You know, when you do the Passover. Even, you know, the, the, the scripture in Luke 22, verses 10, which talks about Jesus saying, follow the man into a house bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into that house that he entereth into. That's the age of Aquarius. That means the, the end's not in Pisces. According to, if you follow the, the text and what it all means, the interpretation, you're going into the age of Aquarius. So this, this to me is a possibility. I'm not saying it's absolute, but I mean, I think it's very interesting. And that 23 is time. If you haven't seen my bloodline decoded, please go watch it. You're going to, you may have to do a search for it because it's not even showing up on my video catalog. You just type a search, you just search in and you type in bloodline. And and it's this 23 is tied to the royal star of the lion. That's what the number in numerology, the 23 is called the royal star of the lion. And that royal star of the lion is the number that's tied to Yaldabaoth. 
and the Gnostic Demiurge, which is the Lord of Sirius, which obviously is Allah. So I'm going to give you guys and gals, I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you some things to think about. Okay. That's why I wanted to come on here. I, I wanted to give you some things to think about and I'm going to do it with the cards. I'm going to do it with the cards. So, you know, keep in mind that The Jack of Diamonds, I, I want you to really take this and really take this and, and we just have to have fun with it, okay? Let's just focus on the neutrality of all this. We, life's amazing, right? Well, I, I want to make this, life is amazing. You, you got to make it amazing. Amongst all the horrific things that happen all on around us, if this stuff really goes on and it's all, well, you're not there. Be grateful you're not in that situation. But I want to go back again to perhaps this area 51 and what what the hell's going on there pure speculation now right but i'm using the numbers and i know that this and i've got this coming out in my area 51 i know what bob lazar says when he says moscovium and it can be used for deadly purposes it's used in ufos and it's the 115th element i know i already know i don't need anybody to tell me anymore now i know with absolute certainty that the periodic table is where it's at and the moscovium the 115 is tied to the longitude of area 51 in Nevada, which is called the silver state, silver equaling 20, silver being the most electrical element on the periodic table. So it's 37 degrees north, which is this card right here. This one, the Jack Diamonds, is the latitude north of Area 51. And then when you bring it into the tarot to get the picture and an extension onto that, let me just pull it up. This is where it gets heavy. And it's just like out of a it's like out of a it's like out of a science fiction book, man. But then you get in it gets into this one. The Jack of Diamonds card is this one right there. This is the this is matching the latitude north of Area 51 in Nevada. That's off limits. One of the most top secret places in the world. This is with the energy coming down. And it's the it's the night of Pent the night. And this card right here is card number 76. There's a word that is used in the Old Testament to describe the fallen angels. It's called the Nephilim. And if you take that word and you put it in the numerology calculator for Hebrew, guess what the number equals? 76, which matches this card which matches this card, which matches the latitude north of Area 51. So there's something to this, folks. The plot just thickens. Like, this should be a wow factor for, for all of us. I mean, if you want to write a book, if you, want to, if you want to create a screen, if you're a writer and you want to create a screenplay, man, this is it. Because now we're getting more defined on these possibilities. And I could just see where it's going. Now I can see, I have the I have the eyes to see it now. I don't know about you ladies and gentlemen, but I mean, it's pretty, pretty easy to see now. Human cloning is 47. Here, here's what's tied to the 47. It's my freaking birth card, by the way. Now you'd be like, oh, wait a minute, is Logan a clone? Well, I mean, I got baby pictures and, you know, I got two parents and, but I don't even know how this whole birth thing works at this point. Now everything's, it's like you might as well throw everything out the window. But this is tied to human cloning. Human cloning equals 47 in numerology. The word scripted reality equals 47 in numerology. So if somebody asked me, hey, uh, decode Stranger Things. Love that show. <laughs> so, started to dive into it. The the and I didn't even know this. So this Stranger Things is about the upside down world, right? The opening up a portal, dimension, dimensional portal. 
and opening up this dimension. And I mean, uh, Gordy Rowe, Gordy Rose from the uh, from the company up in Canada, the um, uh, the D Wave computer. That guy comes right out and says on his video, "We're hiring people. We're opening up portals, and we don't know what's going to happen. We think these thing, these whatever entities, are going to be nefarious." And he's like laughing about it, and people are signing up to do this stuff. It's pretty crazy the times we live in right now. But anyway, um, from all my findings right now, I, I got I got a notepad. Look at my notepad of information. I'm going to go through this with all of you right now, and I'm going to tell you what my findings are, so you can take it and you can do your own research, and perhaps add to, or maybe figure something out as we are doing here with decoding. So what I have found that it really links to this this Area 51 and perhaps cloning going on there, testing, implant. I mean, is this, you know, you get Westworld. I mean, is this all being done right now? And it's been being done. And this is how you control the world. You, you, you create people. And then you send them out into the world, you know, but you got to real. I want to just digress and tell all of you this, ladies, and because some people say, well, you can break free. And when you break free, and, ladies and gentlemen, I've broken free. I mean, if there is such a thing as defining uh, breaking free, I mean, I've turned off the mainstream. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really following that anymore. My programming is completely different now. But yet I can sit here and go into complete silence and not utter a single word and ask these cards questions and I get answered. Definitive answer. Because I know now, I, I know what every card means. And I get my answer. And it's very distinct. It's not like, you know, it's like, oh, I got to do another one. And, I, you know, it's just straight up. There's no doubts now. So then I, then I pose the question to people. I say, okay, well... If you can break free, well, then define that because I feel like I have, but I've broken free and now I'm, fall, I'm being used for another script. I mean, how, how do, what are we to do with this information? I just, this is the part I just, I can't, I haven't been able to, I'm being authentic. I have not been able to figure out how to describe this to all of the decoding world. I just haven't been able to, to, to describe it. But anyway, Area 51, if you do it properly, and there's many ways you can do it with Francis Bacon, and, and, you, and I have this coming out, there's going to be no denial, but it's going to be 60. 60. 60 is tied to Neodymium and the 144, and 60 is tied to the Chosen Ones and all these stories in the biblical text. The moment, remember, 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 the base of the world, the base of the world's consciousness, the base now, is the, the is in, in the religious, is the Bible. There are so many other sc screenplays playing out, but the Bible is the forefront leader in the spell book being presented on the world stage. And we then have to say, well, who wrote it? And you're going to get people say, well, you know, it was God that wrote it. Okay. I mean, is it... Is it a coincidence that the Dead Sea Scrolls were, were found in the caves in 1946 and 47? 47 being tied to scripted reality? And that 46 is a very special number because going back to my Stranger Things, I was researching it, the Duffy Brothers, their birthday. This is like, like blew my mind, ladies and gentlemen. The Duffy Brothers or the Duffer Brothers... They were both born, because they're tw twins, February 15th, which is the 46th day of the year. Guess who else has that as their birthday? How about Matt Groening from The Simpsons? <laughs> born on February 15th. And the card that represents that is the 10 diamonds, which is card 74 in the, in the tarot, which is the mirror of the 47. The, uh, the card that is the 46th card in the deck of the tarot, here it is. 
If you know what the terror, if you know what this means, man, this is like, dude, this is a card of deception right here. This one. So anyway, let me go back and, and, and tell you all about what I found and, and the time. And I can, and I, I know now in my research, I can tell all of you confidently that um, Bill Gates and Anthony Fauci, now I know why they came together. One is from medical, one is from computers. And when you bring those two together, you can kind of put the rest uh, in together and all this. Um, and then we can't leave Elon Musk out of this because, uh, man, his <laughs> he's tied into this as well. This is all, this is all the transhumanism movement, which, you know, again, um, I'm an observer of this reality, right? Where's it going? Why is all this stuff happening? And it's just this, just the natural evolution of mankind without our say. This is just where we're going to go. But anyway, the, the card that's tied to those two guys, Gates and Fauci, as I've been showing, it's the seven of, of cups, card 43, tied to this element called technetium, which means artificial made by man, right? Made by man. So, and what's so fascinating about this, ladies and gentlemen, is that Bill Gates' birthday, October 28th, is the same birthday, same day, as the gentleman who published the very first edition of the New Testament. How about that? You think that's a coincidence? The guy who was responsible of publishing the very first edition of the New Testament that is made in Greek has the same exact birthday as Bill Gates. Coincidence? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not a coincidence. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I have so many notes here and I just want to try to, I want to, oh, let me just show all of you something. I want to show all of you guys. I, I want you, I want all of you, if you're, if you're a decoder and you like to do research and all that kind of stuff, I, I want you to take a look at this. Okay. This is, this is really important. What, what I found, there it is right here. So as I was researching Area 51 and the cloning, and I, I came across this organization, and the guy's name is Cloud Vorileron. Let me see if I can. It's this, this religion right now. Now, folks, this is where it gets super, super, like, mind-blowing. So this, this religion called Ra-elism, Ra and El, Okay, it's a UFO religion, and it was it was founded by this guy Claude Vorlon. Okay, and he thinks he's like the fortieth incarnation of Mohammed and Jesus and Buddha, etc. He feels like he following. You start to research this, and this guy right here talks about the Elohim, saying in 1973 in the mountains in France he got uh, he got contacted by the Elohim. And they told him all about what was going to happen. And look at this. He's all about human cloning. Okay. He's all about it. And he says, this is, this guy says that human, the human species was cloned. We have been cloned from day one. Okay, you got to go start to research this stuff and then you have to keep your mind open, not shut it down and say, absolutely not. You got to keep your mind open and start to research this and look at it. The origin, the 19, September 19, then you go to the 1937, 46. Remember that loop? And then area 51 being 37 degrees north. 
Folks, this, all this shit is tied together. I promise you it is. And this is so interesting, this movement, this religion, and what they preach and what they teach. It's located in Geneva, Switzerland. But don't dismiss this stuff until you read it and research it and do your due diligence. Don't just say, well, no, they're nutballs or nutcases just because it doesn't follow uh, in with what you believe. Okay, you got to start to research this. And, you know, and is this a possibility? Because, ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you something. Okay, I, I, I haven't really talked about myself that much in, in, in like how I've decoded myself. But the word Elohim, okay, the word Elohim in numerology is a 41. That's my latitude north. So should I just quietly dismiss that and say, well, there's nothing to that. That's just all, that's all fluff. No, well, we'll see when you're a decoder and you're really going to deep depths of how this reality works about you, you got to decode you, start to see where your position is. I know what my position is. And there's something to that for me, for sure. And why I've stumbled across this. So anyway, going back to Area 51, ladies and gentlemen. The latitude, longitude is the 37 and the 115, which adds up to 152. That 152 is going to tie to this element called europium and gadolinium. And gadolinium is the GD element. Ultimately, this whole area and the location is also tied to the nine of spades. Card number 48, which is this one in the tarot. This is the card of the game of life. Like imagine you coming down here. Maybe you, maybe maybe entities are incarnating and it's a punishment. Like maybe this is a prison. Your your prison sentence is you got to go down and become a human being. And now you're like, oh shit. See, these, these are all the concepts I have. My mind just won't let go of. Like these are all possibilities. But I know for sure, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that there's cloning going on. To, to what degree, I don't know. There, there are, there's a company called um, CloneAid or, or whatever the hell it is, and they're, they're doing it now. But I mean, if they've come out publicly and they're doing that now, what do you think's going on behind the scenes of what you don't see, what we don't see? Folks, we're getting, a, this, this whole Westworld thing is coming round robin again. <laughs> it's just, wow. Let me see if I can find the, there it is. So this is the card This right here, this card, card 34. This one's tied to the moon and it's tied to the Nephilim. And, it's and that's tied to the fallen angels, it's that story. This one, the, and this is the, the, the Jack of Clubs, which is card 24. 24 hours in a day. That 24 is very special. I mean, my birthday's 2-4. I'm supposed to find this information. I haven't figured it out yet. Like I'm trying to put this stuff. This is so complicated. But I mean, is it an accident that Don, Donald Marshall, the whistleblower hit Donald is 24. And how about who else has the name Donald on the world stage? See, we need to start thinking in terms of like, what ifs? This reality is not what we think it is. And again, I just, I'll just tell you this. This reality is not real. It can't be. Because then you start looking at the grotesque, the nasty, the possibilities. Of, and it's like, man, what, who, if you if think about, you know, I've, I've, I've said this to my, the audience, you, all of you, 
so many times. I said, if you were, if you're a parent and your child was in need, of, it was, it was in dire need for you to help, help it. It was beat. Maybe it got beat up or your, your, your kid broke their leg or, and you found out about it. What do you do immediately? You go help your kid right away without any hesitation. That's not what happens down here in this reality, folks. It's been going on and on and on and on and on and on. It just doesn't stop. And then you go look in nature and you have all these predators. Hop, take the praying mantis. Straight up killer. How about little ladybugs? The, pu- the oh, beautiful little lady. Straight up predator, man. We don't pay, people don't pay any attention. I didn't pay any attention to this until I started studying insects. Ladybug, straight up killer. If you have a garden and you got a whole bunch of aphids that are killing your garden, get some ladybugs. Put the ladybugs on the leaves. Guess what the ladybugs are going to do? They're going to go straight up kill the aphids. Straight up kill them. See, if you were living in that condition, you would, what would you do if seeing a ladybug start gnawing on an aphid? If you were that size. That's what, now that's what you're dealing with. Praying mantis is straight up cannibal. The vampire spider, straight up cannibal. Oh, I mean, we're just supposed to dismiss this stuff in nature now. And then we get to our level, our fractal, the human being experience. And then people, they just, they brush everything they don't see. They brush it off. So it's like, how do we explain this stuff? And then we got this cloning stuff going on and now we're moving into the age of aquarius which is i know thyself which now you get into starlink and the neuralink and the implant and wherever we're going with all this stuff and you know i know uh, people i know a lot of you you just there's like there's no way i would do that what if you don't have a choice in the matter what if what if whatever's running this reality is going to wipe it out It's going to wipe it out because it's tired of human beings screwing everything up all the time. You know, I just, I'll give you an analogy, ladies and gentlemen. Here in my spot in Mexico, I've had a problem, or I shouldn't say a problem, a challenge with ants. And I love ants because as a, growing up as a kid, I was always feed them. I was just fascinated by ants. But I just started having an issue like where they were like, Oh, geez, they're coming in from the shower. They're coming in down on the ground. And I live in a brand new building, but you know, the, the building settles and there's cracks and, and, and it's like, I leave, I, I leave something out and I come in and just they're everywhere. And at first I'm like, oh, you know, I'm nice. And cause I love animals. I love, I love creatures. I love everything. And you put them outside. And even when I vacuum them up, I have this little dust buster. I just, I go empty the dust buster outside and you know, they're still alive. So I, I don't feel ethically. I don't, cause that's how I am. That's how I roll. But now you just, you get to a point where it just continues on and on. And then you, one day you wake up, you snap, you go crazy. Like I see myself getting, I'm like, geez, again, what the hell, man? So now I have to shift my life around because if I don't, then I get a, a flood of, of ants all over the place. And I'm sure a lot of you can attest to the same thing. And I, th- this whole incident, ladies and gentlemen, for me, it's taught me so much about myself, about the creation around me. And I thought, I thought to myself, man, the ants probably think I'm God. If they, if they could think like I could think and you, the way you think, they would be like, that's God. And it could kill us at any time just by walking. I mean, how many times you step out? I said this so many times, we're all stolen cold killers. When you walk outside, you're constantly stepping on things. You don't even pay attention. Can't help it. What about those insects? They got families too. Don't you care about that? You're like, oh, it's just an insect. Yeah, but if you had to reduce yourself down to their size, you wouldn't be saying that. So it's all, it's just a killing machine here in this reality. So I was this infiltrated with these ants and, I re- and I'm, I'm like, man, this is, this is how, if, you know, God probably looks at human beings. It's like, man, I mean, you know, it's, if, there, if this is the way it works, if there's a creator looking at its creation and then allowing, first and foremost, why would you allow all this stuff to happen? Don't give me this devil and Satan bullshit. We're imperfect human beings, and if you got a child in need, you wouldn't hesitate to help your child, but then the, your creator doesn't help you. 
doesn't help with these nasty, gnarly things that are going on. So I, I've come to the conclusion this reality is not, it's not real. It's a television show. It's a movie. It's real here, but it ain't real. It's not real. That's my final answer, ladies and gentlemen, because you got a better answer. Scripted. We live in a predestined scripted reality. So all this stuff that's happening is supposed to happen. Anyway, going back to the area 51, what, what's up with the 51? Well, let me, let me talk about that. Let me talk about that. So we have to talk about why is the number 51? Why, was it, why is it area 51? Who picked the 51? Why the 51? What's the mirror of the 51? 15. Who's got the birth card of the 15? So the 15th card in the tarot, the mirror of the 51 is the devil card. The 15th card in the cards of illumination is... I should have had all these prepared. I knew I was going to jump all around. Here it is. This, this is the 15th card in the deck in, in the cards of illumination. Guess, guess whose birth card this is? Elon Musk. It's the mirror of the 51. The 51 is the queen of swords. The queen of spades. The queen bee. See, the spade suit. Here's the card of transhumanism straight up. Transhumanism being 44. This is the 44th card in the deck. This is the birth card, the founding card of the Bavarian Illuminati. Five of spades. And don't, don't freak yourself out if you got this as your birth card. Like, it's just the way you got coded. These things have multiple meanings. But nonetheless, the, 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 the 51 is the mirror of the 15. The 15 is the mirror of the 51. Elon Musk is the, the richest man in the world right now. The, the, so we take now the most wealthiest person on the world stage with, you know, a lot of power. And then you start to like, well, the word beast equals the number 15 in numerology. <laughs> He's got the, so the 15th card as his birth card. Hello, ding, ding, ding. Are there any bells going off here? And the promote and what his job, what he incarnated to do. Here's his, here's his tarot card right here. It's the card of the future. This is the future card, the futurist. This is, this is what Elon Musk has for his birth card. Born on June 28th. The guy has a, a 28th birthday. Bill Gates born on the 28th. Anthony Fauci born on the 28th. The, the writer of the first New Testament born on the 28th. The word Google equals 28 in numerology. I mean, do, should I, do I have to keep going? Well, this is, and this ties into cloning. It has to. So the 15 is the mirror of the 51. 51, area 51. So here's the 51st card in the deck, the queen of spades. The spades are the earth suit. Fire, air, water, earth. And it's the queen bee. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to throw out there as a possibility is that the queen, if there is a queen, like the queen of the hive... Is that Area 51? I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying you need to take it into consideration. And then you take the Queen of Spades and the Queen of Swords right there. Tied to Area 51. Guess what card number this is? 63. Well, that number 63 is tied to Copper and 29 and the Devil and Satan and Yaldabaoth and yod heh Wait a minute. How do we bring the ancient Israelite God and the Bible into all this? Well, we, we have to. We can't just dismiss it because it's not part of the equation here. The queen, not the king, the queen bee. It's tied to Area 51. Right there. To the name. And then you get into the the area 51 being the 60th 
uh, 60th uh, um, number in numerology. And let me just show all of you, folks. This is what, I, this is what I'm saying. See, we, we take all these layers, we bring it into, and we're talking about cloning. Okay, here's, here's the 60th card in the deck. Area 51 equals 60 in numerology. The total of it. Look at what that is. Rock bottom, finished, closure, done. Wrap it up. Ten of spades, and the ten of spades is the ten of, I'm sorry, the ten of swords is the ten of spades in the, in the cards when we connect all that. The, the, you got to know the cards, and I'm trying to give you the breakdown. If, you ha if you're new to this, you just got to follow along. You just take the cards and you convert them. But here, here's the card right here that's tied to Area 51 as well. It's the ten of spades, card 49. The 49th element on the periodic table is called indium. And indium, as I showed, it's tied to Stranger Things. 49th card in the deck, the word Stranger Things equals 49, which is tied to the upside down world. And you're getting into, you know, multi dimensional beings. Talk about the locusts. They talk about the locusts being let out on the world stage if, you, if you're a fan of theology. The locusts get let out. Well, I trace that back to a location on the map in St. Louis, Missouri. Why did I trace that back? Because my social security number is tied to the Federal Reserve Bank in St. Louis. On the back of your social security card, there's going to be a number, there's going to be a series of numbers that'll tell you what bank that you're tied to. Mine was tied to St. Louis, Missouri. And what's the area code of St. Louis? 314. My last name is Payette. It's Pi 314. <laughs> And the address of the St. Louis Federal Reserve is 411, which is the mirror of the 114, which is the weight of the 49th element. It's 411 Locust Street. Yeah, that's right. Folks, we're about to see some kind of science fiction shit that just to blow you, rock your mind. I mean, it's just... So Indium's tied to the 21st card in the deck, coming down into the, the portal. This is the portal, the Stargate, which is the Zodiac Wheel. Are, are, there, are there interdimensional beings coming down into this reality through the portal? I mean, I got it pegged. I got it, folks, I got it pegged. That cloning is tied to the moon. I have it pegged absolute. The word moon is 23. Clone is 23. History is 23. Blood is 23. Crown is 23. Clone is 23. Groom Lake, where Area 51 is, groom equals 23. They're grooming people. This is, this is not an accident. This, I'm telling you, this is, this is some serious movie shit right here. And then when you go to the, uh, to, to, to really give you a <laughs> I don't even know if I can even show this to you folks. The, my, my book that I go by, uh, this book is, is a godsend because it has all the secrets in it. And, I, and when you know how to read it, you, you can pick sports winners in here. So, like I picked the last th Super Bowl winners because of this book. I don't bet though. Don't care. Don't ask me for this. I don't have copies of it. But anyway, Area Fifty One is tied to the the uh, also the card tied to the uh, the twenty fourth card in the deck, the Jack of Clubs, twenty four. Okay, just remember that Donald is twenty four, Trump is twenty four in numerology, and Area Fifty One, the latitude longitude. And the fallen angel story, it leads to the 24. And the jack of clubs, I even pull it up. There it is. So the, the Nephilim and the fallen angel story and all that stuff, if these are interdimensional beings that have come down here and played out this game to, you know, have a hand in all this kind of stuff, well, this is the card that's tied to them. The, the 24th card in the deck. Remember, Donald is 24, and that's where uh, you had Donald Marshalls. 
Donald Marshall, 24. Donald's 24. Donald Trump, Donald is uh, 24. Trump is 24. Is Trump just a clone? And this card right here, this one, when you get the picture and the tarot, where the hell's my tarot card? Right there. Here's the fallen angels right here. Bam, tied to area 51, card 34. 34th element on the periodic table, selenium, which is from the word selene, the Greek word for the moon. Folks, that moon, a lot of people don't think the moon's real. Well, okay. I got it pegged, tied right to Area 51 and Fallen Angel story, if that is such a thing. I, I have so many notes here that I, I just would make your head spin. I mean, the world needs a hero. I told you that Donald Marshall is on the cover of Megadeth's album, The World Needs a Hero. And when you do the numerology of the world, let me just show all of you real quick, just so we can show you the numerology. I want to just, just, I want to just be crystal clear here. There you go. The world needs a hero. Uh, no, that's not it. Oh, shucks. Okay, well. Anyway, this is a song off of the album Megadeth right here. Let me just show all of you. Let me show you. Uh, uh, Mega. There it is. Here's the album cover right here. Okay. This this album cover, this 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 album came out, and it's called The World Needs a Hero. And this they showed Donald Marshall, the whistleblower for uh for the cloning center. This is him right here. And he even said, Yeah, that looks that's totally me. Right there. Well, this song, The World Needs a Hero, is song number two, and there's there's the numerology of it, 78. Okay, you go, you take this number 78. Now, the, listen, the world needs a hero. 78, you go to the periodic table, and the element that has a weight of the 78 is selenium. How about that? And then selenium is element 34. And this is the 34th card in the deck, which is tied to the fallen angels. Wait till I show you. This is clear cut man this ain't no like dancing around trying to you know rub fluff in your face clear absolutely crystal clear i mean donald marshall i looked at his account his youtube account what day did he create it on the 28th day of the month january 28th the queen of clubs and the queen bee in area 51 is the queen of swords or the queen of spades. Spades is 24. Spades is 24. The word spades, spades represents you and I and our spirituality. And spades, when you look out of that on the periodic table, 24th element. Look at what the picture it is of. This is tied to the spades. And the spade suit is tied to area 51. Area 51, when you go to the uh, the cards of illumination and you look at the tarot, here's the, here's the Queen of Swords tied to the card number 51 right there. Cut 63. And you're going to get it tied to Copper and Yaldabaoth and the game of life that we're all playing out. Crystal clear, folks. I have so much notes on this now. I say I gotta get so bogged down. I have so many. I have so much material, and just won't let me go. Won't let me stop. Whatever's in my head, man, it doesn't let me stop. Yeah, I can say, well, just stop. Well, then, like, I get the urge to do it. What's what's feeding me this information? Because I'm not for like the whole, you know, the the all these ideas. Like I work, if I had to work for a team, it would be team yo. I work for the good guys, right? Like I'm an observer. I'm slightly love in the middle path. I know that both sides are the, are the traps. Like if you, if you take the side of the church, you're going to be like, oh, there, yep, yep. And then you want to go fight. No, I'm not into that stuff because I know how magic works on the world stage. 
So you, so you would say, well, wait a minute. If no one fought, then what would happen to what's going on? What would happen to cloning if nobody fought? Well, you see, you're not giving your energy to those entities. They would have, they would crumble. You need, because everything's about marketing. Everything in this reality is based on marketing and influence. There is no deception. We just call it that. It's just energy being influenced, influencing you. And we just say, oh, that's, we're being deceived. But then when something good comes along, good God, it's like, oh, that's good. Yeah, that's okay though. That's all right. Yeah, that's because that's good. But when it's bad, well, now it's not organic. Now it's in, you know, it's, now it's, you know, folks, come on, man. Are you really paying attention to the machinations, how this reality works? You go back, if you, if you follow the, remember the most popular book on the world stage is the Bible. Who wrote it? No one knows. But it says right there in Isaiah 45, verses 7, that I create evil and create peace. Right? It says it right there in black and white. Uh, Maria, how many fallen angels? Well, the story is 200. And 200 is tied to the, a, the 80th element called Mercury. Mercury. Mercury is 23. Moon is 23. Crown is 23. History is 23. Clone is 23. Yeah, Tominoid talking about Trump and... The 88. Yeah, I, I, bro I did Back to the Future Part 2. I broke the whole movie down with, with, with that. But, he, but ladies and gentlemen, go use the Chaldean. It's, he's got 24. 24. Which is tied to this whole cloning thing. Clonaid. The company Clonade, the first company, 24 in numerology. I mean, you, you kind of do, you kind of do it. I mean, Eve, the first clone they had was on 1226, which is the 360th day of the year. That's a complete perfect circle right there. Anyway, I just thought it was really interesting, all this information. So I wanted to come on here and kind of throw it out there at you, ladies and gentlemen. This is a really, this is a deep, 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 deep topic. Um, and I wanted to just throw this out there to you. Uh, again, Area 51, is it a cloning center? It, I say, is it? I'm not saying it is. Is it? Why is it so top secret? Well, I have no doubt about it that Bob Lazar is speaking some kind of, has a lot of merit. Speaking is tr his truth, but it has merit because when you cross-reference the periodic table, pff, it's, it's right there. It's, it's Moscovium and what powers UFOs. It's tied to the la longitude of Area 51. That's, 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 that's a, undeniable at this point with that. Yeah, someone's mentioning Kobe. Yeah, Kobe wore the number 24. Again, tied to, you know, I, I had a friend of mine one time, he said to me, and this really clicked. He said, if you watch these athletes on the, on the, on the, on the telly or in person, you know, the ones that are six foot five, seven foot, and these are all, this is the, these are the, the, the closely linked to the Nephilim. And I, I was like, huh, that's kind of interesting. I'm not saying it's true, but I was like, yeah, that's, you know, why do they have like, these great athletic abilities and they're super tall and they entertain their entertainers to keep you busy enough to not see what's really going on on the world stage. This reality is a big, uh, you know, it's just a big, uh, battery. 
And everything inside this reality, again, folks, if we just slice and dice it, even cloning and the horrific things that could possibly be happening going on, man, are they supposed to happen? Well, they, they, I'm finding they're in the damn script. They're in the script. So how could it not be? Here's some more information. Donald Marshall, his first letter to the world to release this information was on December 2nd. Otherwise written as 122. 122 is the weight of antimony, the 51st element on the periodic table, which is tied to the all-seeing eye of Horus in your brain. That's tied to transhumanism. Okay? Implants in your brain that I say we have. All right, what are we to do with this? this th th these are the layers that I look at. I don't just kind of like frolic around oh yeah I'm gonna let me use my four base ciphers and oh that word equals that and I think you got to figure it out the world needs a hero the song that's in relation to Donald Marshall who's on the album cover of the Megadeth album three minutes and 52 seconds long otherwise when you convert it it's 232 seconds that 232, the prime number is 233. Guess what prime number it is? The 51st prime number. How about that? What is 51? Anytime you see, tied to area 51. 51 means the implant in the brain. Westworld, transhumanism, cloning. This is all round robin, folks. This is all tied together. I have no doubt. And then you get into, again, you get into this religion, ra elism, and it's tied to the Elohim. And the guy, Claude, comes right out and says it, that we're just, uh, we're just uh, made in the image of the Elohim, and we're all just cloned. And that would make a lot of sense with my research, because I have often said, in my bloodline decoded, I showed the, the connections to the country of Japan. Like, the, is that really where the start of the human being species, or where it all started? Japan, the land of the rising sun. That's tied to us, our blood, our, our blood. The, our, our blood types. Then let's get into the blood types. You guys want me to blow your mind right now? The blood types. Cadmium. Cadmium has... Cadmium is element number 48. 48's tied to area 51. 48's tied to the jack of spades. Or the, I'm sorry, not the jack of spades. 48 is tied to the nine of spades. Which is the game of life, which is this one right here. This one. So it's tied to cadmium. Cadmium has several atomic weights. One of them is 113. 113 is tied to the eight blood types. The eight blood types. A, B, O, A, B. You're going to have one of those. Well, that, according to my research, is tied to Groom Lake. The numerology of Groom Lake, Groom is 23, Cadmium is 23. Cadmium is tied to our blood types. Just tied to Area 51, folks. Just tied to Japan, man. I, I These... It just goes deep, keeps going and going. Man, the stuff I have found, I just, I don't even know what to say. Well, that's why I wanted to come on here and do this because the stuff I have found, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just, I can't keep up with the slides trying to make them and like I have so much material. But David, David Scott Mustaine, the founder of Megadeth, comes out with an album called The World's Needs a Hero and he's got Donald Marshall on the cover and David Scott Mustaine equals 66 The World Needs a Hero is 78 78 is found at the 66 decimal digit in the string of pi I mean you think Dave Mustaine's sitting down writing out his lyrics and doing all the choruses and the bridges and whatever it takes to go into a song and compiling that together you think he's sitting down with all these layers to get it to come out this way hell no so there's something controlling this whole reality. 
You can go beyond the scope of cloning and transit. Something has to be controlling this entire reality. Has to be. There's no other logical explanation. That's why you're getting all these sports games. Like anybody that you, anybody that is a fan of sports, if you think for one second that these that there are people that actually are sitting down and they're like, okay, this team's going to win by this much, and, and then they make it happen, you're nuts. Though people are being used to have these outcomes happen. One little misstep, one little missed tackle, one little fumble with your glove, something wrong with the ball, the ball. To, one little thing happens cost everything and then you got to have all these people involved multiple people no way man and then then beyond the people that are involved in the games then you get all this stuff in the background that you can decode that i see and then you and then that's all influencing you subliminally you have to add that layer in as well the fans and you know what's on this what's on the billboards and what numbers are up there what the timestamp is and when the play happened when it started Folks, there's, there's just no way. So, yeah, I, I really hope that those of you that think that you're a fan of sports, if you think man's coding it, you, I think you're crazy for thinking that. Crazy. No way. Man is not coding sports. They may be carrying it out. They may be playing the games, of course. But they are not orchestrating the entire construct of what sports is all about. Nope. Just like a movie. Sports is like a movie. Movies have screenplays, they got writers, they got directors, producers. Well, it's the same thing with sports. We're, you're in a movie, folks. And that's why you, you were drawn to the dirty laundry. We were drawn to like, oh my God, I can't believe. Like I watched this amazing movie last night. I hadn't seen it by the Duffer Brothers who created Stranger Things. You want to watch an amazing movie? Go watch the movie Hidden, 2015. Amazing movie. Had no idea it was going to end the way it was. So it was one of those that didn't, you, I couldn't figure it out. And it was awesome. But it's all scripted. A movie. Why, why, why does people think this reality is not scripted? When we have these great decoders like yourselves that are decoding stuff and you're seeing the numbers right in plain sight. They're seeing them embedded in pi and phi and mathematics and prime numbers and sine and cosine waves. The frequencies of these numbers. Composite numbers. Numerology, um, you got all the, a million different ciphers now. The, uh, uh, astrology. How are these things happening like this? I sh Go watch my scripted reality part two, Martin Luther King, MLK. His real name was Michael. Michael is Archangel Michael. Martin Luther King came to play the Jesus Christ character. That's what he incarnated for. Is something running him remotely? Before the guy ever came out of his mother's womb, it was already written in the script that he was going to get assassinated. And then you would say, well, he didn't really get killed. I mean, folks, why, do we, why are we going and saying this kind of stuff? Because people are programmed to say, that's not, we're in this stage now of where that's real, that's fake, that's fake, that's real. Well, what is real? If you want to really bring it down into the aspect of like, okay, yeah, that was staged. Okay, cool. But then you go a fractal beyond that, what's running this reality? Then there's staging going on beyond the, this reality. So you get staging and then the fractal beyond that of running man, then it, we're being staged. So what is real and what's not real? And cloning, it, it, obviously it's happening. It's, it's this company, CloneAid, you can buy, let's say you can buy uh, your clone. You can pay for it now. So if it's out on the mainstream, well, I can assure you that it's been going on for a very long time. I would even venture to say, if I had to guess, thousands and thousands of years. And as I had shown earlier with the slide, man, is, is it possible that the story of Jesus being resurrected was nothing, nothing, it was only just a part of being cloned? if that guy was real, right? I'm not saying he was or I'm not saying he wasn't. I'm neutral. I don't care. I wasn't there. I can't prove it. It's a story. But if that story was real, was it just a cloning experiment? Can't rule it out.
Jason Forheaves is the crazy killer on Halloween. <laughs> I, I, go, go, go watch. You want us to talk about scripted reality, folks? I mean, are, are these actors just clones being controlled remotely? And is, is mankind doing it? I mean, again, this are, these are like science fiction concepts. We, we, like we know cloning is already, it's, it's happening. We, we know that, but now you take the cloning and you move it into transhumanism. We know that's next on the world stage. You already know it. You know it's coming. Will you have the ability to say no? Well, a lot of you would say, I hope so. Right? You would hope you'd have a fork in the road. But cloning is a part of transhumanism. And is transhumanism the ultimate domination of the human being uh, species? To where you're going to get full control. Maybe we have free will, and then when you get this cloning going on, it was an experiment, and then now you get this transhumanism, which is full-blown control. Now that you have no free will anymore. So you got to take into consideration, ladies and gentlemen, you got to take into consideration the aspects of astrology. See, we're not in the age of... We're probably not. I should say probably not. We're probably not in the age of Pisces anymore, which was a mutable sign. Mutable. Meaning you got to be a chameleon. And then everything else under the sun and what Pisces is all about. Now you move into the age of Aquarius. Aquarius is so different. You're moving into technology, advancing beyond your wildest dreams, beyond your wildest fantasies. What does that look like? What does that look like on the human being experience on Earth? And is cloning part of transhumanism? I say absolutely. I say they go hand in hand. It's just, folks, there's so much to this uh, concept. But man, what I have discovered... To me is... Un I mean, when I come out with my decode on this... Because I'm, I'm working on this. I mean, it's going to blow a lot of you away. Like you're, gonna, you're just going to, your jaw's going to be on the floor. The information I'm going to present to you. Because I, I just, again, it's like how, how does Donald Marshall, the whistleblower for cloning, get put on the cover of a band named Megadeth and, and David Scott Mustaine, his, his numerology links up with The World Needs a Hero, which is all about Donna Marshall and in mathematics and prime numbers and digits and pi. How, how, how does all this... And this is not a one-hit wonder. Like, I've been showing this for years now, these connections. So it's like, I'm telling you right now, David Scott Mustaine of the band Megadeth, he didn't have a choice but to play in the band Megadeth. I showed in my last Eye in the Sky decoded, if you haven't seen that one. The band members of Alan Parsons Project that created Eye in the Sky, the album... They, they're linked to the eye. They're I linked in the eye of Horus. They didn't have a choice in coming together and creating that band. They did not have a choice. That was their screenplay. Folks, I, I've shown it with Led Zeppelin. I've shown it with the police. I've shown it with Living Color. I've shown it with the Beatles. I've shown it with Prince, Michael Jackson. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. How many more bands and musicians and do I have to show all of you? to show you that we live in a predestined scripted reality. And now you have cloning that is absolute, it's happening, it's been happening, and you tie that into what we're moving into the world stage is, uh, oh, the, another one, here's another one. It just came to my mind. Let me show all of you right now. Let me just get the picture. If you want it. This album right here. If you want absolutes, let me just get it. If you want absolutes with the undeniability of the connections I'm about to show you, here they are. This album right here by Tool, okay? This album came out August 30th, okay? 30th is tied to the words role play, okay, in numerology. But this album right here, Fear Inoculum, if you know what that means, and you obviously see the syringe here, okay? 
This is this is this was their first album in 13 years. 13 is tied to the death card in the tarot. Okay? But you take the title of this album and you go into numerology and bam, there it is. It's the 51. And you go to the periodic table. What is the 51st element? Well, it's the all-seeing eye. The all-seeing eye of Horus. And it comes from the Greek words meaning not alone. So what do you think? this album was talking about right here what do you think this album was talking about fear inoculum okay first album in 13 years 13 in the tarot right there you figure it out you put two and two together stop being naive okay stop like try, trying to push this away and say oh you know that's good coffee talking Okay, the, the, the folks, this is the script that was written before we ever got here. Okay, we're just seeing it now. We're decoding it. The first album that Tool comes out with in 13 years, and it's tied to the death card. And they have this album called Fear Inoculum. And when you do the numerology of it, it's 51. And 51 in the periodic table is this. What do you think? What do you think this is all talking about? Transhumanism, folks. What, what was, what's the precursor to that, to start that? What do you think? It's a freaking no-brainer. <laughs> My research. My research has the Holy Bible as the Bible of transhumanism. The book of trans it's the book talking about transhumanism. That's what that's where I'm at right now. That's where I'm at right now. I'm, I'm at that level of like a possibility. That book was, and again, I want you to think about this now. We have to just, just think about what I'm saying. Just open your mind for a second. You create a book. Mankind creates a book. Their mind's not their own. They're being influenced to create the book. They create the book. And the book, it becomes the world's most popular book ever. Number, it's the number one book ever created. Okay? And then you take the same construct in that book where it says that the road that is paved into destruction is the largest and biggest. And you correlate that to what's the most popular book on the world stage. It just, it tells you. And there's a reason why there's 27 books in the Old Testament and 39 in the New There's, there's a reason for that. There's a reason why there's 66 books in there. That, that book is not what you think it is. How would you get people to actually promote that book and you'd create fear with it? That, that's how you would do it. And that's what has been done. That book has, been, has created fear for people. Fear God, fear the devil, fear the boogeyman. And then the alternative is you put your faith in this character who you've never met, don't even know, you have no, you're doing all these rituals at the church and where the hell did all this stuff come from? And what does it mean? Like honestly, ladies and gentlemen, start using your freaking noggin here for a minute. Do you need to believe in somebody to be a good person? Do you, you're, do you need a savior to save you when you could save yourself when, when you just need to be a good person? How do you become loving? Well, I don't think of a, 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 a deity to be loving. I'm just loving towards people. I'm compassionate. I help people. I love the world. I love the animals. I do that because I feel that's the right thing to do without believing in anything. But then you have this book, man, that becomes the world's number one book on the world stage. And then you then think about it. Then the governments come in and they give tax cutoff breaks with the 501c3 which i if you haven't seen my 501c3 decode it 501 51 why do churches get tax exempt because it promotes new churches that's why that's why you know they say oh it's it's god and why do why do govern why does the, the governments why do they use a bible to swear in presidents why do you get to put it when you go to court 
I mean, the word government equals 46, 1937, 46. You start to see the picture now, what I'm trying to tell you? And all these constructs in this reality, cloning, and if there is a reptilian race down here, if there is like, uh, you know, I mean, you, Donald Marshall talks about at these cloning centers, there's these reptilians. They've been around for thousands of years, like dinosaur times. I don't know. Is it true? I don't even know if what the guy's saying is true. But there's something to this with the numerology and the breakdown and the first time he brought his letter to the world on, he brings his first letter to the world on December 2nd, which is the 122, which is the, the weight of antimony, which is the 51st element. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just throwing some kind of ideas that you just really think about. And the age of Aquarius is not going to be like the age of Pisces. It's not even going to be close. Let me look at some of your comments. Yeah, religion is a very expensive game. I mean, if you just do, if you're a fan of numerology and just you type in the word religion, it's 27. 27 is tied to the same word called sports. Some people, their religion is sports. And then 27 is tied to the word heaven. 27 is tied to the word currency. We live inside of a battery, ladies and gentlemen. Everything goes down here. The disgusting and the beautiful. The crazy preposterous, the cloning, like all this stuff that's going on. Like, you, you, you look at it like, I can't believe... Like, I think stuff's going to come and you're going to be like, I just... There's no way that's real. You won't even be able to believe it. But it's like, if you start studying the, the insect world and you start... Just go start to study the praying mantis... Put yourself down in the shoes of the praying mantis. Go on a branch. Imagine you could shrink yourself down and be on the branch next to a praying mantis, which is a straight up stone cold killer. What made that? What made the freaking cannibal praying mantis? What made the predator that's called a ladybug? What made that? Why was it made? And is it really horrific for a ladybug to sit there and crunch on an aphid on your leaf to protect your rose bushes that you don't pay any attention to? Why is that any different than what's going on on the world stage, all this stuff, this nasty stuff? It's not. It's a fractal down. It's a fractal that's different. How about all the stuff inside your body going on, the predator and prey going on with your the ciliates and all the, the journey to the microcosm? How about inside your cells of your body? You got white blood cells. Well, what are the white blood cells' job? to attack the foreign invaders. Well, then the question would be, have you ever asked this question? What created the invaders? What created the bacteria? You think they just poof out of thin air and bacteria start? What created parasites to invade the body? What created those? Well, it had to be the same thing that created the damn white blood cells to help your immune system. So if we take these same constructs, and we start to break down and decode all the stuff that we've been talking about here tonight. And cloning and Area 51, which obviously are heavily tied to the fallen angel story. It, it is. So maybe there's some merit to that. Maybe there is some multi-dimensional being. There was a matter of fact, I was listening to this recording of about this guy who calls into the uh, uh, before uh, George Norrie, there was a guy named Art Bell. And in 1987, I think it was, he called in and he was like crying and sobbing. He's like, I only, I only have a short time. And he was saying that, that you know, there's these uh, interdimensional beings or multidimensional beings. And he was talking about Area 51. And, you know, it's very interesting because... When you do the numerology of multi-dimensional beings, it equals the number 75, which is the same outcome as history repeats itself, 75. And Lucifer is 75. 
So at this point now, ladies and gentlemen, with with, with my decoding and my research, I, I'm I'm honestly, it makes me just like want to scrap everything and just not do it anymore because it's it's so obvious that our reality is it there there's there's not much room for for choices here. There's just not. I mean, even even the Christ is tied to the Nephilim because the Nephilim are tied to the number 24 and the original Greek spelling of Jesus, the I-E-S-O-U-S is 24. The word church is 24. That's why, you know, if you follow my research and if you follow my lives and I, I encourage people like decode yourself, figure out what you're doing here, figure out what your passion is. Turn off the mainstream. Like right now, there's a lot of horrific things going on around the world, but you're not, you, if you're here right now, then you're paying attention to what I'm saying. This ain't horrific. There's hor horrific things that have been going on on this planet, it seems like forever. Forever. So think about it. If horrific things have been going on around, around this world forever before we ever got here, and people have always gotten out there and fought against it, but they not have changed. They've never changed it because shit still is going on in the world stage. That's horrific. So what does fighting do? Nothing. No, doesn't do anything, obviously, because that's what mankind's been doing. Mankind has been resisting and fighting all the bad things in the world for forever. If you read your history, and it hasn't done anything, it's actually gotten worse. If you think about it. Why has it gotten worse? It should be getting better. Because if you look at the cycles of life, you go from the golden age to the dark age. And when you get into the dark age, you're farther away from the source. Meaning that you're a senior sit. We're in the age of death right now. Which is why you get this crazy science fiction stuff that looks like it's real. That's really going on. There's some merit to Donald Marshall's story. Tied to the bin, Megadeth. And like, how does, how does, how does, Dave Mustaine from Megadeth, how does he have any tie-ins to Donald Marshall and cloning? I mean, is he a clone? He just don't know and he's up there slamming on the guitar? I've seen him in concert. Are there multiple people of, are there doppelgangers? I mean, the word doppelganger, which means your evil twin. Do we just have, is it, what, in doppelganger, does it mean an evil twin or is it just you being remotely controlled? The word doppelganger is 54 numerology, which is tied to Xenos, which means the stranger in your head. Xenos. Xenos is 27. So if you just do the breakdown of all this, ladies and gentlemen, Xenos, which is comes from Xenon, which is the 54th element, and doppelganger is 54, which means your twin. What's tied to you? What is, what's feeding, what's programming you? And do you, do you think you have the ability to cut that out? Can you cut that out? I know a lot of you think you can. I, I, I literally have cut so many things out of my life. I've simplified my life, broke it down into a minimalistic state, and I'm still being used by something. I don't know. I can't label. I don't know. And I just, you know, like Werner Erhard, I did a, I did a, 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 a little short skit with him. And it was, it thinks. Go watch my, listen to it. It's not me, it's Werner Erhard. He said, it thinks. He goes, it's not even you doing it. It's it. You're not, you're just along for the ride, he says. It's not you, you're not doing anything. The little voice in your head that you download, you get angry, you get sad, or you get emotional. That's not you doing anything. So yes, you have this aspect of cloning where people are actually making clones of other people. Okay, cool. And then who's in control of the clones? Well, then obviously it would be the creator of the clone, right? So if you have that fractal aspect playing out, then you go a fractal above and you have the human, like, okay, all of you would probably say, I'm not a clone. I'm in control of my life. You, how, how are you to prove that you're in control of your life? You, here's the answer. You can't. You can't prove it. But we have, we have now shown, I'm not going to say prove anything. We have now supported through all of you great decoders supporting this channel and doing your own decodes. Man, I have a lot of great decoders that send me stuff that just blow my doors away. Showing a scripted reality in the mainstream, in sports, in movies, in music, in religion, and even in real life. And this, my, even me, I've shown it with my timestamps, 
the crazy things that I'm, uh, folks, what am I doing here? I'm not here to try to screw anybody over. I'm trying to help people. So you have this whole aspect of the angels and demons, if you want to just look at it that way. And it's just this sliding scale. It's push-pull. It's two sides of the same coin. Running this reality. And then you get into, you know, again, this religion, ra elism. I'd encourage all of you to check it out. ra elism. And this guy, Cloud, who says that we are just clones from the Elohim. The Elohim. We're just clones. I mean, when you go to the Genesis, let me, let me just show all of you. <laughs> you guys want to see something pretty funny. Let me show you this. Um, so, the, the, and again, I'm going back to the most popular book on the world stage. I have this decode coming out called Fire and Ice. <laughs> God, it just makes me laugh. So here it is. Right out of Genesis, most popular book on the world stage, Genesis 6, verses 3. Remember that 63, which is tied to Area 51? Look what it says. And the Lord God said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Well, look at what the weight is of the 51st element, tied to Fear and Oculum, the album that came out by Tool, which is all about perhaps the linking of transhumanism. This is the implant in your brain, folks. So it's right here in black and white. You can't miss it now. All right, you got the eyes to see. Wait till I come out with my fire and ice. And of course, I'm going to be bringing into that this decode, I'm going to be bringing in the amazing artist named Pat Benatar and how she was being used to sing the song called Fire and Ice. And what do you think it means? It's the spirit what is just said right there, I just showed all of you. It's the spirit coming down into flesh. Fire and ice. Spirit is fire, flesh is ice. And Pat Benatar, who sang that song, Fire and Ice, was being used to sing it. All amongst all the other great songs that she played. Hell is for children. Hit me with your best shot. These songs have double meanings, man. Triple me Telling you. I just showed you Genesis 6 verse, Genesis meaning the seed. Genesis is 25. Paradise is 25. Area 51 is known as paradise. Just beginning to see what I'm telling you here. And Genesis 6 verses 3 and the 63rd card in the tarot is the Queen of Swords right here. And this is tied to the 51st card in the deck, which is tied to Area 51. Folks, do you see what I'm telling you? I see what I'm showing you here, the connections. They're undeniable when you start to bridge them all. Especially with the damn periodic table tied to theology. Right there, ladies and gentlemen, Genesis 6, verse 3. You, you, you just read it. 120 years tied to antimony, the all-seeing eye, transhumanism, the implant. It doesn't get any more crystal clear than that. Yeah, Jane, Metallica saw... Man, Metallica has a great album, 1991. It's the Black Album. Go, do you want to go talk about being programmed? There's a song off that album, song number two called Sad But True. You know it's sad but true. He says, hey, I'm your life. I'm the one who takes you there. Sad but true. You're being used. <laughs> that whole album's amazing, but that album right there talks about mankind being used. Chris Topher, can I decode adversary? Yeah, the word adversary equals 25. So any, anytime you get a subject, like the sun, 
what's the adversary of the sun? Well, the earth is, because the earth doesn't, the, the earth is the black sun, right? It doesn't give off any of its own light. It needs the light of the sun. It, it's, it literally is a parasite. And then the earth, once the earth now takes in, now the earth is a host, and then human beings become a parasite. All of you here, all of us, we're all parasites. And don't tell me you're not. You're lying to yourself. If you wipe your ass with toilet paper, you're a parasite. But how do you think toilet paper gets made? By the trees. You eat food, right? Where does the food come from? The earth. We're parasiting the earth. It's our host. So everything has an adversary. Your, your adversary, you, it's your ego. That's your, your spirit. Your spirit and your ego are always your angel and demon. You got one on each shoulder, that old thing. You got an angel and demon on your shoulder and they're both whispering in your ear. And you get into the Indian Proverbs and you're going to talk about the wolves, the two wolves inside of you. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, these are these are these are my findings. Um, you know, I, I will be very I'm very confident in my research and what I found. I'm, I don't need to defend and I will not defend the things that I say or the things that I show. I put out on my videos. These are my opinions and truth. They're subject to change because I continually decode and you got to make the truth your own. I'm not here to twist your arm and force anything on you. All right. But I'm, I'm taking the same methodologies and I'm decoding anything you can shake a stick at. And I can see the I can see the source code. Everything in everything inside the self-contained system is owned by the same boss. That's it. It can't be any other way. And when you, when I say mankind's being used, I mean that's a sixty. Mankind's being used. That's the number sixty. Anyway, I don't want to get too far off topic, but folks, I know that. This whole cloning thing is, is, is happening. It's, it's going to perhaps move into a deeper uh, expression in this reality. Uh, it's becoming mainstream. I mean, it starts with the letter C. That's the third letter in the alphabet. Three is tied to Gemini, and that's the prison bars. The logo of that in astrology is the prison bars. Gemini is 19, which is the word master. Gemini is 19 in numerology. Master is 19 in numerology. I showed this. Across the way from Gemini is Sagittarius. And that's ruled by Jupiter, okay? And Jupiter is tied to Abraxas and that nasty deity. Why We don't even know about these concepts, folks, other than what we can talk about them. Like, is Abraxas real? Well, how can it be anything different than Mazda or Allah? These are just ideas. But ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate all of you being here. And again, I'm, I'm not here to take anything away from what you want to believe. But you're here because you're interested in this topic. And you're here because you probably believe that this stuff is happening. Beyond just cloning Dolly the sheep and now cloning babies and beyond that. And then you got to ask yourself, like, what's the, what's the point? Why? All right. <laughs> Rooster. I don't want to make this about what's your question and go. I mean, pre I appreciate each and every one of you being here. I, I just really wanted to come on and, and talk about this topic and throw some nuggets at you. And then you can take this a little bit deeper. But the things I showed you so far to me are undeniable. There's there's some very good links with this. Um, and I want you to just go deeper. I want you to go deeper into all this and you got to figure it out for yourself. Again, I, I'm telling you that, you know, our reality is not what you think it is and whatever that means to you. It's not as simple as just waking up. What do you do in the sleep state? What do you do in the wet? Well, are you daydreaming? Are you lucid dreaming? To me, this reality can't be real. It's real to us. 
but it's a movie. We're being watched. We're entertainment. Just like when you turn on your movie and you watch it, it's the same. You're watching a movie and you get entertained by it and you get emotionally involved by it and you don't even know you're doing it because you're engrossed in the movie. You get lost. Someone has mentioned the uterus. So one last piece of it all, ladies and gentlemen, what attaches to the baby in the umbilical cord? It's called the placenta. The word placenta is the number 30, which is a match to the word role play, which is a match to the word scripted in the same numerology cipher now. You see, if you're a numerologist or if you're a decoder, Stop using the base ciphers. Use just one, one cipher. Create your vocabulary around one cipher. Then you can branch off. But if you're using the four base ciphers as a starting off point, that's to me, that's the wrong way to decode or the slowest method to decode. I'm not gonna say it's wrong. It's the slowest method to get to the, the bottom of how this all works. Because when you, that means you got four chances to connect the words. And then how are you going to figure that out? Where are you going to go from there? People are just, they get off. Like they have this orgasm because they find a word and it connects to some other word and using the four base ciphers and they get all excited. And then they think they got to figure it out. <laughs> it's just funny. Anyways. So ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Let's talk about cloning. That was my, my take on it. I hope you like the material that I brought out tonight. I mean, I had so much more I could show all of you. I mean, look at my notes. You know, I got two pages and I have a whole Photoshop full of slides and just... I mean, once you start looking at this stuff, folks, let me just show you one last one. Let me see if I can find this guy. Yep, here he is. Let me show you one last one. Because I was talking about this. So there's this. So my research into this cloning led me into this religion called Ra-alism. Ra and L. Okay? And they're, they're look at, I mean, their logo is kind of cool. I kind of like their logo. Um, but it's a UFO religion and the founder Claude claims that we are clones and we were created by the Elohim using their advanced technology. Now, if you go and study Genesis, it says, let us make man in our image. It's plural. Thank you, Jordan Maxwell. It's not one God. It is multiple. Okay. If you follow that story and then again, ladies and gentlemen, how do you get all these cultures and all these races from from Japanese to Chinese to Indian to the Native Americans to African Americans to the Caucasian. How do you get all these skin colors and different eyes? How do you get all that out of two human beings? It's retarded to even think we came from two human beings. No way. But anyway, I, this, this studying of Area 51 led me into this, this religion right here. And this guy right here, Claude Maurice Marcel Vorlerhan. Boy, look at what his birthday is. 30th of September, 30th is tied to role play. 30th is tied to placenta. 30th is tied to the word scripted. But if you take his name right here. Now, remember what I said about what this guy says. He says that the Elohim created humanity using their advanced technology. Okay? So you go to numerology and you type in this guy's name numerology and he's a 98. So we take this number right here. And we're going to bring it into the periodic table to get a closer look. And what is the element that has the weight of the 98? Well, it's this element called technetium. And it means artificial. This is technology, folks. 43. Technology. That's what artificial means. It means made by man. But man's being used. So there's nothing art. We just call it. It's an adjective to denote the noun, the subject. So this guy 
the founder of Raelism, has the 98 tied to this element technetium, which means artificial. And if you decode this technetos, and the 43 is the 14th prime number, and 14 is tied to silicon and time. And then you go and look at it from here, and you see that he says that an extraterrestrial species known as the Elohim, tied to the Old Testament, created humanity using their advanced technology. Now, think about what I'm showing you here. You think this guy's trying to mock you and screw you over? Right here. And he's got the 30th of his birthday. And when you go here and you look at this word right here, scripted is 30. Just like the word role play. And then we all born from a placenta. You got the new age name, which is tied to the Gnostics, what they call. Sure. So is this all a coincidence? Am I just full of shit and I don't know what I'm talking about? And I'm just, I've gone off the deep end. Go start studying this stuff, folks. This is what I'm studying. This is this is what I'm being led to. The, I'm telling you, I'm being guided. I go from Area 51, I go to cloning. I start researching Donald Marshall. I start reaching, researching Megadeth and the world needs a hero and looking at the dates and the, what they're coming out to on the calendar. And it's just, it's nuts. It's all tied to this implant in your brain. And I don't, I think it's unavoidable. A lot of people are like, oh, you can detach. Folks, I feel like I've detached, but <laughs> the results of my life say completely otherwise. And I'm not trying to hear anybody. I'm not here to dupe anybody. Screw you. I don't work for any secret society. I don't belong to any organization. It's just me, me, me. That's it. It's just Logan. That's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. And here's a, I'm just going to throw this out there for my last kind of, this is just fun. This is just for fun. This is just for fun. I think that they're going to, they're going to, they, meaning the controls of this world beyond mankind, it's possible they're going to put Trump back in uh, as uh, in 2024 possible but even if even if i'm wrong i don't care just just for fun but it doesn't matter ladies and gentlemen as i said it does not matter who get they're all little they're all being used just like we are so there's no difference like it's not being mean i mean anyways ladies and gentlemen i appreciate all of you for showing up here tonight let's talk about cloning making this one a short one this one's less than two hours uh, a far cry from my normal what's your questions but this is a special report let's talk about cloning i hope you got some out of this uh tonight today wherever you're at in the world I, I really appreciate each and every one of you for showing up for coming on here for supporting this channel for your donations your patreons uh, seriously ladies and gentlemen it's because of you that keeps me going in this game of decoding and um it just as I go on and I move through this, these are the layers that I'm getting at. I wanted to throw something at you. Uh, and now I want you to take this information and do something with it if you're a fan of decoding. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, since I got tagged on the last, let's, uh, let's end it where I started. This great introduction from Digital Shock. This is called Rock Instrumental Number 5. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So until next time, we will see you later.